Hi everyone, Vacha here from Recording Studio 9 and thanks for joining me again today. In this video, which is part of a series of videos that I'll be presenting to you in regards to Magic Samplitude Music Studio 2017, today we are looking at one of the important parts of the settings of the software, the settings of the audio driver. To get to the audio settings of Magic Samplitude Music Studio 2017, there are several ways we can access. One way is to go to File, Program Preferences, System Audio. We also have the shortcut the letter Y. The Samplitude Music Studio 2017 audio setup screen is quite comprehensive and gives us a lot of options that we can use depending on our needs for recording or playback purposes. The drivers is the most important thing that we need to look at because that's the software that works behind the scenes that transfers the data from our audio interface into our DAW. There are several options that we might have and the drivers is selectable right here at the top. Currently, I'm selected Yamaha Steinberg USB ASIO driver, and that's the audio interface that I'm actually using, the Yamaha AG03 audio interface. If we click, we can actually see there are a lot more options available. Some may not be available in your system because you may not have those audio interfaces available. Some other options are the WASAPI, you also have WDM and MME. Those drivers are good enough for playback, but for real-time multi-track recording, it's always a good idea to actually select a driver which is an ASIO driver. If your audio interface does not support an ASIO driver, you can also download the ASIO for All driver from asioforall.com, install it, set it up so that you get very low latency, full multi-track access to your audio interface. But in my case, as you can see, my Yamaha Steinberg USB ASIO driver is available. So I'm going to select that. Depending on the capacity of your CPU, you can certainly select multi-CPU support with core count and enter the number of cores you want Samplitude Music Studio to use while processing the audio. Another great option available in Samplitude Music Studio, which is not found in many DAWs, is the monitoring settings, the monitoring mode. If you have a, an old or low capacity CPU PC that you're using to record on, you can use this slider with various options to minimize CPU usage during recording or playback. In No Audio Monitoring option, Peak Meter Only, this allows you to see the levels of signal coming in into each of your tracks, but you are unable to listen back what's being recorded. This is great if your audio interface already supports direct monitoring via headphones on the actual unit itself, and you don't need to listen to any audio coming back what's being recorded. By sliding, sliding it to the next level, here we have a bit extra edit option. By using a little bit more CPU, we can now listen to the instruments or music being recorded on our tracks with low latency using the ASIO drivers. But if you use any plugins on those tracks, we are not able to listen to them live. We're just going to listen to the dry signal that's being recorded onto each one of those tracks. This is great if you are recording multiple tracks all at the same time and you don't really need any effects processing done on those tracks and listening to them back. Moving to the next level, here we move on to a little bit more CPU usage, but this time we are able to monitor effects or plugins which we add to our tracks, like amp simulators or some uh, compressors, EQs, and so on. But any effects we use on our buses or auxiliaries or on our master track, those effects are not processed. This is great if we are actually recording guitars and we want to have an amp sim and we want to hear the result of those amp sim as we are playing and recording at the same time. Moving the slider to the next level, this is at the highest level, so the most CPU is used on this level, but this gives us 
most of the options. Now we are able to listen to any effects which are added onto our tracks, as well as our buses, and on the master track as well. Unless you have a quite a powerful PC that you use to record on, the recommended level would be on tracks FX monitoring. This way you can monitor the tracks, but you don't need the extra CPU power for your auxiliary buses, as well as your master bus to listen to while you are tracking. When you are mixing the final results and you are not recording anymore, the effects added on buses and on the master bus are still available, just not available when you are recording a track. And finally, the switch behavior. This affects the behavior when we arm a track for recording. In tape monitoring mode, basically as soon as we click the arm button on the track, ready to record, we are able to listen the live audio coming in from our audio interface for that track. We don't need to press the listen button on the track to listen to. This is automatically done. The other option is the manual monitoring. That means when we click the arm button, we still cannot hear the audio coming onto that track from our audio interface. We manually need to click on the listen button to able to listen the live audio coming from our audio interface. The other option for audio devices is looking at our recording and playback devices that we have. As you can see, my Yamaha USB ASIO input 1 plus 2, left and right, and I have playback left and right coming in and out. Different audio interfaces who have multiple inputs and multiple outputs will be listed here, and you can manually select, enable and disable those inputs and outputs. OK, let's try this out. I have tape monitoring enabled. I'm going to click OK. Let's have a look at Input for our track number one. It's going to select input one and two, which is correct. And now we click the arm button. And as you can hear, we now have our signal level going up, and we are surely able to hear ourselves the direct sound and the sound coming from, from the track because we are monitoring it. And we don't really need to click the listen monitoring button to be able to listen to it. Let's turn it off again. Let's go back into the settings. Change the tape monitoring into manual monitoring. And OK. Let's click the arm button. Now we can actually see the signal but we are not listening to back what's being uh, recorded. We need to click the monitor button until we actually get the audio coming back from our DAW. And this echoey or some funny phasing sound that, we are, you are, that you are hearing now is basically the latency between my direct sound going through my audio interface into Samplitude Music Studio and coming back into the audio interface, and that's what you are hearing. So that's basically what the monitoring switch option does from manual to tape monitoring.